Mac Beggs was a star wrestler at his Texas high school, but despite living his life as a boy, he was told he had to compete on the girls' team. Mac's story is just one of several featured in Hulu's documentary, Changing the Game. Here he is with his grandmother, Nancy, who helped raise him, talking to Hari Srinivasan about their experiences and about the recent wave of anti-trans legislation in the United States. Christian, thanks. Joining us now, Mac Beggs and his grandma, Nancy. Thank you both. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that have not seen the film, so I want to start with just a quick excerpt of the trailer. Let's take a look. Wrestling found me. I love it. I do train as hard as a man. Three, I fight as hard as a man. Two, I am a man. One. And I'm the state champ of female high school wrestling. Being transgender is not a choice. Would it be fair for me to be competing on the boys' team? No. I am a girl. That's who I am. Track has given me a sense of self-worth, self-confidence. On your mark. They could say whatever they wanted. Set. But at the end of the day, I'm still running on the female team. That's so unfair. It is totally a male biology. Where do you locate that so-called right to be included? They don't have the right. They're not girls. Mac Beggs, knowing that it was going to be hard, why did you want to wrestle so bad? Why did you want to wrestle even if it was on the girls' team? I enjoyed it. I mean, I felt like, I guess it like kind of stems deeper into the fact that, you know, it was something that I was used to my whole life was playing on a female team. That's all I ever knew. Um, and I felt like, you know, if I just quit, I'm not a quitter. And just because this one thing is stopping me from doing the thing that I love, I'm not going to let it stop me because I'm going to continue living my life the best way I can to the best of my ability. And if I have that capability, I'm damn for sure I'm going to use that. <laughs> there was a point in the documentary where you were wrestling boys and you said, I feel like I'm winning, but I feel like I'm losing at the same time. What does that mean? I mean, it's bittersweet. I mean, to identify as a man and, um, you know, compete against women, it was really, like, hard because it's, like, I'm enjoying what I'm doing as I'm, you know, doing the craft, right? And when you see at the end of the day, like, you're stepping on the mat with a girl um, rather than a guy. You're not really um, playing on the team that you're supposed to be playing on. And it's kind of like you kind of, like, have to shut down your mind a little bit and go into a whole different place. Nancy, at one point in the film, you said that, you know, Mac wasn't a girl. We made him into a girl. What did you mean by that? From the time Mac was little, he acted like a boy. He always acted like a boy. He threw his dolls in the trash. Um, he hated dresses. Keeping one on him was like, we, we talked about how, how are we going to keep him dressed in dresses? And he was going to a school where he had to wear um, a little jumper. And he hated that. It was just such a fight every day. And uh, I don't know if it, when he finally came out, it was like, okay, now it makes sense. Because I'd never seen a child hate. I was a, I was a born tomboy, but I did not hate the things that Mac did. I did not fight them like he did. And we just, I had never been exposed to transgenderism. I didn't know what it was. And I do remember at one point, and I don't know if Mac remembers, when he was in junior high, he came home and we were talking about it. And this is after he told us that things weren't right, that he thought he, thought he was a boy. And I, I looked at him and I said, why can't you just be gay? What is the problem with this? I don't understand. I don't even know what you're talking about. And I was like, I don't even know either. <laughs> but we're going to figure it out together. You know, the, one of the things in this film that strikes people is you and Nancy and how you were processing the change. And I want to play a small clip of that. When I look at the pictures of Mac as a little girl, I remember how sweet, and and we kept thinking, we got a little tomboy on our hands, what are we gonna do? And just never even 
never dreaming that we would ever have to change. It was just always our little tomboy. So, yeah, I, I never look at them anymore. It's easier to leave them locked up. So I can see why Mac feels that way too. This is a picture of Mac, and I know he wants it off the wall so bad, but he won't say anything because it's the only picture I have of Mac with long hair. So I think today I'm going to take it off the wall and <clears throat> put it up with the others. So I'd like to be a fly on the wall when Mac comes in and sees it going. Mac, do you have any recollection of walking back home and seeing that last photo gone? What went through your head? Um, the thing was, is that I didn't even know that, I guess it was down because it got to the point where it was up so much. I was just like, maybe I could just kind of like block it out. And then like I saw the film and she said that and I went back like as soon as we got home, I went back to go see where I love where she took it off. And I was like, well, side dog, she actually did it. Because I actually was asking her for a while, but she was like, I guess she just they finally did it. I was like, I love you. Could you empathize with the ideas that your grandmother was expressing here? I mean, she felt basically a loss of a granddaughter. She gained a grandson, but she felt a loss to a child that she had connected to over years. Yeah, I, I definitely did think about it. Because like that was like one of the hardest things when coming out was like how like my family was going to react. I didn't, I guess I wasn't afraid in the sense of whether they're going to react wrong or right. I think I was just like scared of a reaction of any kind. And that was like, kind of like the unknown a little bit. And Nancy, in this, in this film, what's also interesting is, is you talk a little bit about the struggle that you had with acceptance. You, you, you say in the film, you know, that you are, a Southern Baptist through and through, you're a gun-toting, hardcore Republican. I'm a deputy sheriff, and I work in Dallas. I have been with them um, 25 years. I was issued a nine millimeter, so now I have two nines, two 40s, two AR-15s. But here you are, uh, not afraid to step on some toes when it comes to trans kids. No, I'll stomp toes when it comes to trans kids. I, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, at, at work, I have a problem with a lot of people having a, a bad attitude. And I told them, I said, we can agree to disagree, but this is what my child, my grandson is. He's going to be this way. It's, it's non-negotiable. And your opinions, whether they be religious or whether they be political, don't really matter to me. And, and I did struggle uh, with the religious aspect of it. And I did some real in-depth reading in the Bible. And uh, God loves us all. He doesn't care. And he is there for us. And we don't have to make a choice. So I thought people don't have a right to criticize. And I don't have a right to criticize. If, if this keeps Mac happy and he is... he really in his heart feels this is what he is, then I accept it without, without any reservation. Took a while, but I had been raised in a real strict background. You know, Nancy, staying with you for a second, I, I, you were there at all those wrestling matches. You're, you know, not quite the stage mom, but you're the wrestling mom standing there banging on the mat saying, pin him, get it done. And you must have heard yells and the taunts from parents in a way that would hurt any parent. I mean, what, what did you tell them? How did you respond to that? I tried not to be in anybody's face about it because I didn't want to agitate it. I knew Mac was facing a lot to stay in wrestling at all because we were getting uh, threats of, of, you know, we'll sue, we'll sue. And, and I knew what that, having been dealt with cases like this, I knew what it could bring. So I tried not to agitate. 
but if people came to me, uh, I, I didn't have a problem telling them my opinion and that they didn't have to like it. That was the way it was going to be. He's going to wrestle. He's going to wrestle girls. If you don't like it, you need to go to your representative and have them change it so he can wrestle boys. So I kind of used it as an enlistment for parents to uh, help us help us get it changed. If you don't like it, help us get it changed. Mac, during that time you were wrestling, one of the more consistent critiques from parents was about your hormone therapies and you know they would immediately say listen if my daughter was on steroids if she was on something else she'd be banned from this but here's this uh girl who wants to be a boy or is transitioning and you know it just seems unfair and so if you could help our audience understand what what is the threshold of the types of hormones or therapies that you were taking and was that an advantage was it a disadvantage what was it there for um, I felt like I was on an even, even playing field uh, just because of the fact that I always, when I went to a doctor's visit, I was like, are my hormones exceeding in a way that would be a disadvantage for a woman or the levels of a cis woman? And um, we would always have conversations. We kept my dose at a low, at a low dose, um, bare minimum, if even minimum, um, in the terms of transitioning. Um, it was just more of like a mental health state of mind like kept me right like knowing that I could transition through high school in a way that's like in my head it helped me and I just want to make sure I was on an even playing field with cis women so um a lot of people just think that because you know trans men we take testosterone um they automatically think that's steroids and it's not the same thing Florida for example just the beginning of this month it became the eighth state this year to ban transgender girls and women in public secondary schools and colleges from participating on girls, women, and women's sports teams. And then Alabama, the state that you're in, Mac, it sent a bill to the governor uh, barring trans athletes altogether. And they have overwhelmingly passed a bill to make it a felony to provide gender-affirming health care to trans youth. I mean, there's about 18 other states that have some sorts of bills like this. So, um, Mac, I want to ask you, why do you think this is happening, and, and what are you doing about it? The best that I can do is to use my voice's power, and through the actions I do every single day, which is helping kids, making a platform for the, the community to, you know, arise from all this chaos that has unfolded in the country, and... Um, you know, it just makes me really sad and angry because we've had multiple cases of, you know, um, you know, the legislation trying to provide examples uh, for, you know, why, how, how or and why or um, how does a transgender have an advantage in, a, in sports and they don't. It's just, you know, you want to focus on the transgender individuals that are winning. And as soon as we're winning, you want to take that away from us. You know, what do you say to those parents that say, listen, this, this changes the levels of advantage that people have. If genders have any kind of inherent strength difference or speed difference, that allowing children to play on uh, teams with the opposite gender isn't fair. I mean, you've heard that throughout your years now. So what, what's well, your... I mean, if you want to talk about unfair, I mean... If you want to talk about biological um, differences being an advantage over one another, I mean, look at Michael Phelps. He had biological factors that he was born with that made him a better athlete than other, even men in his category. I mean, I mean, it's just still come down to biology, and we are all different, no matter male or female. You talk about the fact that in the film uh, that you went through severe bouts of depression, and the statistic is that four in ten trans athletes contemplate suicide. Did you? Yeah, a couple of times I did. Um, it, it was really rough. I, th I felt like I could talk to anybody. It was just, you know, back back then, I, like, I feel like now that I do have more worth living for, no matter who I am as a person. And that took a lot of growth and a lot of um, self-care in order to get me to that point. Nancy, what was that period like? Did you know that he was this sad? Yes. Yes, it was obvious. He, um, before he started puberty, he, he was uh, outgoing. He was, um, seemed happy 
all the time. When he started to hit pre-puberty, we noticed a difference in his personality. And it concerned me a lot because um, in my family, we've had a, a couple of family members that committed suicide. So I was aware of what we were looking at that you don't just get depressed for nothing. There's something really serious excuse me, seriously there. Um, that's when we start seeking out counselors and uh, some of Mac's behavior constituted some real serious concern uh, for medical reasons. And we, uh, we actually uh, sought out a behavior, behavioral uh, group and put Mac in it. And it, uh, because we were at our wits end, we didn't want I did not want, and his mother did not want to see him commit suicide. We wanted a happy kid and we weren't sure how to get there because what we were doing didn't seem to help it. That's the times that he was going through getting on the computer. He was learning about transgenderism. We didn't, we were, had no idea what he was doing. And teenagers, as you know, have a tendency not to come to the parents, they go to other kids for advice. And I was concerned that he was getting the wrong advice. And we wanted to make sure he got the right advice. And I think it's when he went through this clinic that it really come out that he was unhappy because he felt like he was in the wrong body. Mac, what do you hope people get from watching this film? I hope they, um, you know, from get a firm understanding that we are here, we have always been here. Um, and I just, that there needs to be more love and acceptance because with that, that's when you start seeing like true happiness and, you know, um, acceptance goes a long way. The film is called Changing the Game, Mac Beggs and his grandma Nancy. Thank you both. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you.